everybody. Welcome back to the Dungeon Dive Hobbycast. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Hobbycast, we are going to be venturing into the realms of sword and sorcery. And we're going to be taking a look, a preview look, at an upcoming publication called New Age Sword and Sorcery. And we are also going to be taking a look at an interesting collection of fiction at the Toronto Public Library called the Merrill Collection. So I was made aware of both of these subjects by a man named Oliver Brackenberry. Oliver Brackenberry contacted me and said that he is putting together a new sword and sorcery magazine called New Edge Sword and Sorcery. Oliver is the publisher and he is also an author. So New Age, or New Edge, I should say, not New Age, New Edge, Sword and Sorcery. Uh, Oliver is one of the kind of movers and shakers in this particular um, subgenre of Sword and Sorcery. This, I guess you could say this school of Sword and Sorcery. And today we're going to be taking a look at a couple websites. So for those of you watching the uh, video feed on YouTube, or on Spotify, you'll be able to see the websites. For those of you listening to the audio feed, I will make sure to put links to all of these websites in the description. So the first couple websites, or the first two articles we're going to be taking a look at are from Scott Odin's uh, WordPress blog. And that is at scottodin.wordpress.com. And on April 20th, 2022, o uh, Scott Odin writes, putting a new edge on an old blade. Swords can grow dull. They can lose their edges through age, through misuse and through simple neglect. They can rust, their hilts can rot and fall off, leaving only a tang of metal for hands to grasp. A sword like that, if you permit me to extend the metaphor, is a bit like old genres of fiction. A genre can grow dull, the asseration of old social mores, the misogyny, racism, and homophobia of bygone eras can oxidize a genre, making it seem as graceless as a barnacle-encrusted hunk of metal drawn from the sea. He then goes on to ask another author by the name of Howard Andrew Jones, what is this new age you speak of? And in Howard's own words, he says, we can find inspiration from the old tales without slavishly duplicating every aspect of them. Specifically, I mean, setting aside the sexism and racism and the suspect politics, but embracing the virtues of great pulp storytelling, the color, the pace, the headlong thrill and sense of wonder, the celebration not of the everyday and the petty, but of those who dare to fight on when the odds are against them. We can create new characters, not homages, or ironic send-ups. We can craft fascinating living settings rather than faux Robert E. Howard or genetic, generic game fiction backdrop number nine. We need to make our own worlds and look past the seemingly unbreakable molds set in place by the big names and gaming manuals. We must restore the sense of fantastic. Once magic is banal or easy, once magic rings can be found at the corner market and wizards are everywhere, sense of wonder goes straight out the window. Now, I know that some of you are furiously typing away, very angry that I dared to mention uh, the, some of the problematic qualities of sword and sorcery, but that is absolutely ridiculous. So please stop. Uh, what is it about sword and sorcery fans that get so upset about Anytime somebody is even slightly critical of their beloved genre, okay, I love sword and sorcery fiction. I have a huge collection. I have spent many years collecting uh, the books and many, many, many hundreds, probably thousands of dollars on collecting and reading sword and sorcery fiction. I love it, but there are some problems with it. And I think it is important to address those problems and it is important to move past those things in order to attract new, younger audiences. Because eventually all of us old dudes are going to be dead. And then who's left to buy sword and sorcery fiction? We need to bring in new audiences. 
And so if authors can't inject new things into the genre while just kind of turning their back on the problematic qualities, then that is a good thing. Um, and finally, really on this topic, sword and sorcery fiction is not good because of the racism or because of the sexism. It's good in spite of those qualities. And so if we can create new interesting works of sword and sorcery without those qualities, then it will be even better. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this new edge sword and sorcery brings to the table. I cannot vouch for the quality of these stories yet that are going to be featured in Oliver Brackenberry's publication, but I'm hoping they are good. He is, I'm hoping that once I get an issue in my hand and read it, I will be able to invite Oliver onto the podcast for an interview. He has expressed interest. But I want to read what he is putting out before I fully vouch for it. I just thought the idea was interesting. So you can go to this uh, mail landing page here. I will put a link, but that is uh, mailchi.mp, or you can just search for New Edge Sword and Sorcery. And here you can put your email address in in order to get notified when issue zero will be out. And this is that New Edge Sword and Sorcery will feature brand new sword and sorcery stories as well as intriguing nonfiction related to the genre's past, present, and future. I think I might uh, contact Oliver and see if maybe I can write something, maybe write a review or something. Uh, the newsletter, this newsletter, exists purely to tell you when issue zero of the new magazine comes out and when any future issues are available or crowdfunding campaigns for those issues have gone live. The magazine will be available in EPUB, softcover, and hardcover. For number zero only, the EPUB will be free and physical copies will be sold cheaply at cost. So this is what uh, he answers, what is New Edge Sword and Sorcery? And he says, New Edge Sword and Sorcery takes the genre's virtues of its outsider protagonists, thrilling energy, wondrous weirdness, and large body of classic tales, then alloys inclusivity, mutual creator support, a positive fan community, uh, something that the Sword and Sorcery uh, community could really need, a positive spin and enthusiastic promotion of new works into the mix. Okay, next up we're going to be taking a look at the Friends of Merrill collection. Uh, this is something else that Oliver brought to my attention, and this is really cool. I think viewers of the Dungeon Dive are really going to dig this. Uh, something kind of off the beaten path, uh, this kind of like esoteric uh, genre knowledge that we all kind of crave. But uh, this says the Friends of Merrill Collection at friendsofmerrill.org. The Friends of Merrill Collection is a volunteer organization to support and promote the Merrill Collection of science fiction, speculation, and fantasy, a public access collection consisting of science fiction, fantasy, gaming materials, graphic novels, and other related items. The collection is named after acclaimed science fiction author Judith Merrill, whose original donation of material formed its nucleus. The objectives of our organization are to encourage interest in, Mer in the Merrill Collection and the library, to increase awareness of works of the fantastic imagination and Canadian contributions to this field, to advise the Toronto Public Library Board on policy matters concerning the collection in consultation with the library staff, and to act as a resource for the Merrill Collection and other public and private collections in Canada and elsewhere in consultation with the staff of the Toronto Public Library Board. So Judith Merrill was a science fiction author, uh, publisher, editor, and uh, critic. Uh, she was born in 1923 and died in 1997. And I will post a link to her Wikipedia article so you can uh, read all about her. She seems like a very fascinating woman. I'm well aware of her existence, but I don't know if I've ever actually read anything by her. Uh, she did work uh, in collaboration with CM Kornbluth, whom I have read. And apparently she had a massive collection of science fiction and fantasy publications and she donated her collection to the Toronto Public Library. And so they now have the Merrill Collection of Science Fiction, Speculation, and Fantasy. And it says here on the Toronto Public Library 
uh, .ca forward slash Merrill. Now, this is one of the world's leading research collections of speculative fiction in popular culture. Over 80,000 items uh, cover speculative fiction, including science fiction, fantasy, horror, and magic realism. Uh, it includes fictional books, non-fiction critical works, biographies, pulp magazines, graphic novels, manuscripts, correspondence and other archival records, periodicals, original art, and role-playing game books. And if you just look at this uh, picture that they have, you can see a library shelf absolutely full of D&D manuals. This thing sounds so awesome. I would love to visit the Toronto Public Library and see this. You can, you can plan your visit. It's a collection that is open to the public. Uh, man, this would be an awesome dungeon dive field trip. Hope maybe I can go and, and film a video for the channel or something. This sounds really, really cool. They do, they do different exhibits and events all about fantasy and science fiction. So cool. They also have um, a digitized version of the library, which they are digitizing a bunch of their works. And that is actually accessible online. So you can go to the digitalarchive.tpl.ca and you can look at some of the things that they have scanned in for the Merrill collection. Um, things like The Little Room and Other Stories, We, When the Moon Fell, The Dwellers in Vale Sunrise, Tales of Wonder by Lord Danzani. Uh, Dungeon Dive viewers know what a huge fan I am of Lord Danzani. Uh, Northern Lights and Other Psychic Stories. I decided to I decided to take a look at this one because I thought it sounded and looked interesting and I wanted to see the quality of the scans and they look very, very good. Um, this book is from 1901 and I really liked the introduction to this book, uh, Psychic Stories Introductory. One phase of thought, certainly by no means modern, has played and is playing an important part in the lives and religious opinions of a vast number of persons. I allude to the general belief among certain classes of simple-minded, I will not say ignorant, persons of the frequent return to earth of the departed and the intervention in human affairs of disembodied spirits of men. That sounds like a really interesting book. I think I want to read this, but I thought that Dungeon Dive viewers would just find a great, take a great interest in this collection. And I know I have some uh, viewers and listeners up in Canada. I'm not sure if anybody's in Toronto, but if you are and you have never been to the Toronto Public Library's Merrill Collection, I highly recommend taking a look at this and I would love to go. But the Friends of Merrill Collection, uh, Oliver Brackenberry, the editor of New Edge Sword and Sorcery, is a member of this um, organization. And you can become an um involved with the friends and helping to support the collection. Membership fees are $35 a year. The funds go towards organizing events, printing our Soul Rising news zine, and providing the collection additional funds for purchasing. Uh, memberships and donations are tax deductible in Canada and the United States. But yeah, this is just something that is, uh, it is really interesting. And I know that a lot of us really like this kind of uh, nitty gritty when it comes to uh, the, the, the literary side of our hobby. And this is something off the beaten path that I don't hear talked about a lot, but these great collections of all of this published material are so valuable. It's very valuable to keep these old works alive so that other people can enjoy them. And that is one of the reasons why I collect sword and sorcery fiction. And it's one of the reasons why I still read it and encourage other people to read it, even though there are some of those problematic qualities. I just like to make sure that people are aware of those qualities so that they can take my recommendations uh, with a grain of salt, perhaps. Perhaps they don't want to read something that contains certain things, and that is perfectly okay. I just want to make sure that people know that just because a story contains some sexism, contains some racism, that I am not vouching for those ideas. I think we can enjoy this old fiction, um, warts and all, but it is important to talk about it. It is important to shed light on it and to use that as a launching off point of discussion rather than a uh, opportunity to close the door on that discussion. But I just thought you guys will want to take a look at this. Uh, keep your eyes out for the New Edge Sword and Sorcery publication. Go ahead and check out Scott Odin's blog on WordPress. 
Uh, you can enter in your email to be notified when New Edge Sword and Sorcery is about to publish. Then also check out the Friends of the Merrill collection and Judith Merrill's Wikipedia page and the Toronto Public Library's Mer uh, Merrill collection page. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.